Now we're going to take our solving of radical equations one step further. What happens when we have variables in two radicals? Oh boy. Well, the key here is when we have two radicals, we're going to solve by isolating one radical at a time. All right, we're going to just attack one square root at a time here. All right, and let's see what happens. All right. So let's add this uh, second one to both sides. So if we add that and move that over to the right side, we have x plus 5 equals 2 plus the square root of x minus 3. So we added it to both sides. Now we've got to get rid of what we're, we're trying to simplify and focus on this side. Well, let's get rid of this square root first. So the opposite of square rooting is squaring. Now, be careful here. We've got to square the whole side. Now, it's very tempting to just square this and square this. But remember, if we have two things, a, a binomial like a plus b, and we square it, we don't just get a squared and b squared. We have a squared plus b squared and 2ab. Okay, so we've got to have... We gotta have yeah, it comes out to be that. Now, if you want to convince yourself of this, write this out. A plus B times A plus B. And multiply it all out. A plus B times A plus B. And do all your distributing. And you're going to end up with this right here. So if you ever forget this rule, you should be able to uh, quickly multiply this out and get this. All right. But remember, A plus B squared is not just A squared plus B squared. You've got to have the 2AB. And we're going to use that right now. What does that mean? Now, you could write this out. 2 plus the square root of uh, x minus 3. And 2 times the square root of... Now you could write it out. 2 plus the square root of x minus 3. And 2 plus the square root of x minus 3. And da, 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 da. you could distribute that all out. But I'm going to recommend not doing that. We're going to use this this rule right here to help us uh, jump to a simplified expression. So this rule here says, if you want to square a binomial, square the first thing. So this is the first thing and the first term. All right, so we got the first term and the second term. This is A and this is B. Okay, so when we square A, we get 4. And I like to come over here to the end. This is just the way I like to do it. Square that second part. If we square the second part, then it just squares the square root, and that goes away, x minus 3. So this is a squared. This is b squared. Now in the middle here, we've got 2 times their product, a times b doubled. Well, a times b is 2 times the square root of x minus 3. And we need to double it. So this 2 right here comes from this 2, from the, from the expression. So it's 2 times their product. Okay? And there it is. So we squared it out. We don't have to do all the foiling, all the distributing. You don't have to write all that out. Okay? On this side, we get x plus 5 because we squared the square root, and it just becomes x plus 5. Okay? All right. Well, not terribly tough, but we just got to, we have to use that uh, rule for squaring binomials. Let's just clean it up a little bit here. Uh, we've got a 4 and a negative 3. That's a 1. We'll write this as 4 square root of x minus 3. And we've got this little plus x up there. Okay. All right, well, now we're down to 1 radical. That's that's nice. We had two. We're down to one. So now we're gonna we want to solve for this. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the square root. So we're gonna need to get everything else out of here. So let's get that uh, one out of there. Subtract one from both sides, and let's get that x out of there. And well, this is kind of nice because those x's are gonna cancel. We have a four. And we have on the right side, 4 times the square root of x minus 3. Don't square yet. So we'll divide by 4. This is 4 times 
the square root. So we'll divide by 4, and that leaves us with 1. 1 equals the square root of x minus 3. And now we can simply square to get rid of the square root. So 1 equals x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides, and x equals 4. All right. So we got x equals 4. Now we need to test that out. So let's check that. So we're going to plug in 4. We get 4 plus 5 and 4 minus 3. So this is the square root of 9, the square root of 1. You should put a question mark there. Is that true? Well, we're going to find out. And it's looking pretty good. 2 equals 2. All right, so x equals 4 is our solution. So again, if you have two radicals, get choose one of them to get by itself first. Square both sides. You might have to use this uh, rule here for squaring binomials. And uh, don't forget to check in the end. Okay. Well. That, those are radical equations. What if we have a rational exponent? Now remember, this rational exponent, one-third, really means the cube root. So if you want, you could go ahead and write it out as uh, the cube root of 2x minus 3. But I'm going to say, let's, let's try it a little differently. That would totally work, and then just cube both sides. You'll see it, okay? So keeping in mind in the back of our head, that uh, one-third power means cube rooting. Uh, we're going to see something kind of interesting here. So let's get that uh, radical by itself. So we're going to isolate the radical, or really the rational power, which is a radical, right? So let's get that one-third by itself, subtract 3, negative 3. Again, don't, don't, don't try to distribute this or something like that. That's an exponent. You can't distribute because of the minus. Now, if this minus wasn't here, if this was multiplication, we could. But not when it's add or subtract. If we have, that gives us two terms. You can't just apply the one-third to both. Be careful. Now, we would like that one-third to just be a, a one. If that, if that was a one power, we wouldn't really need the parentheses. So... We're going to use what we know about exponents here to raise that to the third power. The third power matches the denominator because we know a power to a power multiplies. So we're going to multiply that and watch it disappear. Now again, we're going to, what you do to one side, you got to do to the other side. That's the golden rule, right? The golden rule of solving equations here. So 2x minus 3 and one-third to the third power is one, so this whole thing is to the first power, which we don't really need to write, at least. So negative three to the third power is negative 27, okay? So, yeah, we don't need this. We don't need that there. So now it's a linear equation we can solve from there. Just add three to both sides and divide by two. Negative 12. Okay. Now, um, we should check this. Now, we've seen here that we've only run into actually uh, one situation where the, the check uh, really threw an answer out, and that was with the square root. So, uh, a little side note we don't really have to check um, for when we have a cube root because we only get those extraneous solutions when we have a an even root okay so it's a good practice to check anyways and a lot of times we don't uh, but uh, uh, you know definitely when you have radical equations you should check but you definitely must check your answer when you have 
uh, square roots or fourth roots, any even root. All right. So this is going to come out to be negative 24 minus 3, which is negative 27 to the one third. And does that equal 0? Well, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. And that does check out. That's going to be 0 equals 0. All right. So, all right. Well, a quick application here. So these equations are used in real life in some different ways. Uh, here's an interesting situation. When steel manufacturers are uh, making things out of steel, the temperature of the molten metal is so great that the conventional thermometers melt. All right, so if you take a little conventional thermometer and put it in this heat, it's going to melt, all right? Um, so if we have our, our thermometer and we put it in, in this heat, uh, that little glass thermometer or something like that, it's just, it, it's not going to be able to measure it. So the way that uh, the temperature is measured is they'll take a, a speaker. Here's my speaker. All right. Not a very good speaker. Okay. All right. And uh, they'll send sound waves through this. And then the, on the other side, they'll have a microphone. So there's our little microphone. And so sound waves will come through. And if you've ever, if you've ever been at a campfire um, and somebody's talking on one side and you're listening to the other side or some music's playing, if you listen real close, you'll notice the sound waves kind of change. They'll kind of warble a little bit. And that's because of the, uh, the temperature change. So anyways, pretty ingenious uh, uh, way to measure temperature here because we can the, the speed of sound changes because of the heat there. So... Anyways, that's how this works. So engineers take this, uh, or, or they program a computer probably here. And so we want to find the temperature uh, of a blast furnace where the sound travels at 1,880 feet per second. So S of T is 1,880. All right. Uh, now, remember, a little side note. This does not mean S times T. This is function notation right here. Okay. So... Uh, that's what uh, we got going on there. So let's substitute. We have 1880 equals uh, 1087.7 times the square root of 9t plus 260, 26.17 all over 2457. Okay, so we, we got all our substitutions there, and we just got to do some arithmetic here too, some algebra actually to solve for t. Okay, so. Um, the challenging part here is just the, the big numbers. So uh, we want to get this square root by itself. So we've got to get that 18, or I'm sorry, 1087 out of there. It's being multiplied. So let's divide by 1087.7. Now you can decide to either go in a calculator and punch this in, or you can actually just leave it like this. And, um, you know, we have, we have 1880 divided by 1087.7. That's just some decimal number. And it's actually easier to write it like that than it is to go get a, a calculator. So either way, punch in a calculator. Now, if you're gonna, if you're gonna punch this into a calculator and write a decimal, you're gonna wanna write about four decimal places. So don't round off too far if you do this, okay? Uh, if, if, you, if you go to a calculator, that is. At some point here, we're going to go to a calculator, but if we can wait for a little bit, that's great. So now I got to get rid of that square root. So let's square both sides. That gets rid of the square root. Don't try. You can't touch anything on the inside until we square both sides. And so we've got 1880 divided by 1087.7 squared, and that's going to be 9t plus 2617 all over 2457. All right, still working our way down to this t. Let's get that denominator out of there because this whole thing's divided by 2457. So we've got to multiply both sides by 2457. All right, now we're about getting to the point where uh, it's getting a little 
a little cumbersome here to, to write all this. Um, and so we'll go to our calculator here soon. Those will cancel right there. And we've got 9t plus 2617. All right, we've got this whole thing here. All right, you ready to go to the calculator? Okay, probably about that time. Okay. Now we're going to subtract 2617. Uh, 2617. All right. Um, so let's let's pull out our calculator. See what we got. All right. So we're going to type this in just like we have it. 2457 times 1880 divided by 1087.7. Close those parentheses. Squared. And that whole thing minus 2617. All right, so so far we have this number right here. We're going to leave that in our calculator. All right. And let me move this. So we got this 4723.1105. Again, if you're using your calculator and you're writing down in inter between or intermittent uh, calculations, use uh, three or four decimal places. All right, that's that's the best. That's safest. So last but not least, we're going to divide by nine. Okay. So now we'll take that number and divide by nine. Uh, if you're on your TI-84 calculator, you can probably just hit divided by nine. If you're using Desmos, there's this answer key down here. You also have an answer key on uh, on your um, TI-84. It is down underneath. Uh, the zero, I believe it is down there, but uh, you'll hit second, hit the answer key. All right, so we're going to take that number and we're going to divide it by nine. Divide that by nine. And there's our number 524.79. So 524.79. And I don't know if they told us what to round to in this problem. Um, just says find the temperature. It doesn't give us any rounding, okay? So this is in Celsius, degrees Celsius. That's important. So the temperature will be about 524.8 degrees Celsius. That's the idea there, all right? All right, well, there you have it. There are radical equations in an application. And remember, if you have multiple radicals, solve for one radical at a time. And if you have a rational exponent, which really is the same as a radical, you're going to uh, get that ra that rational exponent by itself and, and uh, square or cube or whatever power raise both sides to a power there. And these can get a little complicated, especially when we have multiple radicals, but uh, Keep at it, and you'll get it there. So I hope that helps.